Well, hello everyone. This is Jason Cisco, and we are live on a Friday. Welcome to High Noon and Prayer Nation. We are here together to join the global church with the local church to focus on praying in agreement and alignment. And whether you are praying here in Harris County, whether you are in Pasadena or somewhere around the Houston area, or whether you are joining us, as many of our partners do from all over the United States and all over the world, as we pray together, we are putting a focus on our local context today. And just as we believe God for this global mandate for the church, that we will have a visitation, an unprecedented work of the Holy Spirit in our time that will take us beyond where any other past revivals have ever taken us. Any operation of the Spirit in the foundation of the church from the early days until now in this 11th hour. We will see something in our day and in our time that is unprecedented. Whether we are praying that on the global scale, we want to see it in our local context, wherever you live and wherever I live, wherever your church is, or all of us here that are praying collectively from the church triumphant in our local context, we want to see God's Spirit poured out in an unprecedented fashion, visitation. We are here for a transformation, not something that just changes the outside, but something that changes the inside and moves us into a whole new place of functioning and operation where the lid is lift off of our potential, where the power of sin is broken, where the curse no longer has any effect upon us, and we truly live in the reality of the blessing of God that was given to us through the cross of Jesus Christ. Even the blessing of Abraham, according to Galatians chapter three. And finally, we end with this uh, beautiful understanding of multiplication, that as God gives us the imprint of this last wine, the full concentrated power of his presence and nature, operating and functioning in the church, transforming us individually and corporately, then that transformation is multiplied into new disciples, into new campuses, into new preaching points and home groups and Bible studies. It is spreading this gospel all over the world, but doing it in a way that matches the apostolic pattern and the full concentrated power of what God has determined for these last days. So we welcome you today to our High Noon broadcast. We welcome you to bring your heart, to bring your mind, and to bring your whole being and lay it on the altar so that God can do his best work with all of us. Today, I'm going to be answering some questions that I received from messages online. I'm going to be talking a little bit about understanding the mystery of God's will and praying in the will of God with effectiveness. What does that mean? How do we play that out? This is a theme that is a reoccurring theme but it should be because it is our equilibrium for everything. The fulcrum of our faith is the will of God. So the fulcrum would be the point upon which everything moves around. That thing that never changes is the fulcrum of God's will. And so we uh, move this way or we move that way with desire and relinquishment. Uh, but it is always, it is always God's will that is first and foremost in everything that we do especially, especially in the life of an intercessor, especially in the life of someone completely devoted and committed to God. Not just your casual churchgoer necessarily, but those that are truly passionate about serving the Lord. His will is everything because we are servants. <clears throat> so as we come to you today, we are going to start with that submission process. And I do this over and over again, because God has spoken to me that I am, to, I am to be a constant voice of submission, surrender, sacrifice, and picking up the cross. I am here as a constant reminder. I am here as a, as a, constant, as a constant, consistent sound that we must surrender ourselves to God if we are going to be effective. And so, yes, even though we do it so often, we're going to do it again today because we die daily. Whatever I have done in the past, it was great. Whatever fasting and prayer that I have done and I've lived a, a life of, of surrender to God, that was yesterday. Today is a new day and you and I, we've got to go back to this fight. We've got to get back in the battle. We've got to approach the throne of God 
and we have to surrender ourselves to do it. So if we want to use our gifts and we want God to bless those gifts, we must be submitted. If we want to be effective in the harvest, people see less of us, less of me, more of him. And he shines through us and we are more effective in our testimony, in our witness. If we want to work harmoniously in the church, it has to be less about our motives and less about being offended and less about our petty little ways and more about the kingdom and more about unity and more about empowering one another and less about being insecure and more about celebrating other people's successes and rejoicing with those that rejoice just as we weep with those that weep. All of that happens because I'm surrendered and I'm submitted. And so if we're going to see the will of God done for these last days, we must have that as our first and foremost, and we must surrender our will to him. So this is where we start today. This is where we should really start every morning of every day, <clears throat> but we're coming together uh, in, a, in a unified focus of prayer. So let's do it together. Are you ready? Lift your hands, lift your heart, close your eyes if you can, and let's pray together. Father, we come to you right now. We lift up our hands to you. And as men that are praying today, we lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In the same way, O oh God, that you, that you invite women to come into a, a place of godliness, you, O oh God, inspire men also to lead this way. And I thank you for all of our women that are so powerful in intercession. But I am praying today especially for our men, lifting up holy hands today. We come and submit ourselves to you. God, I, I, I understand that you are the head. I understand that you are the Lord, that you are the King of Kings, and I submit myself to you. I submit myself to your cross. I submit myself to your way. I submit myself to your will. I surrender myself. Now, all in concert together, say, I give you my spirit. Say, Father, let your spirit dwell within my spirit with complete freedom and harmony. For the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. The Bible also says, quench not the Holy Spirit. Father, we pray that your spirit will not be quenched within us, but that your spirit will be fully engaged and that we will be completely yielded to you in our spiritual life, that you may do with us as you please and that you may activate, oh, there it is already, that you may activate the spiritual gifts that you have put within us, that you may activate all of the, of the talents that are already already in us, oh God, and that all things that are a part of our calling and a part of our divine purpose and our destiny may be realized in our life through our spiritual connection with you. Father, we give our souls to you today. Now say it, I, sur I surrender my soul to you, God. As your word says, all souls are mine. You have submitted, O oh God, to the cross. Jesus, you came in the flesh and submitted to the cross. And so you have purchased us. You have ransomed us by your own blood. And I thank you that we now have at one minute and our souls are ransomed. So Lord, let us be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Put your hand on your head right now. And I want you to pray in Jesus' name that God will renew your mind. Father, we pray for the renewing of our minds today, that we will not be conformed to this world, but that we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We surrender our heart to you, Lord, our subconscious and our unconscious, conscious, subconscious, and unconscious. We submit it all to you today that our hearts, which is the seed of our emotion, which is the place where all final decisions are made. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Not as he thinks in his mind, but as he thinks in his heart. What gets past the, the, the gate of mind, oh God, and rests in the heart and how we truly believe in our hearts. That's what determines the outcome. That's what determines our future. So God, move in our hearts today and purify us from all deception in our hearts. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew within me a right spirit. Let me have a heart that is after your heart. Deep calls unto deep at the sound of your water spout. As I feel the pull of your spirit now, pull me in. Do not let me be pulled by the flesh let me be pulled by the Spirit. And now I submit my will to you, O Holy Father. Now I want you to pray this prayer right now. Say, swallow up my will with your will right now in Jesus' name. Swallow up my will with your will 
in Jesus' mighty name. Help me to get in your will and stay in your will. Help it to be impossible for me to get out your will without working very, very hard at it. I pray it in Jesus' name. Now our bodies, we give our body to you in Jesus' name. We are crucified to the world and the world is crucified to us. So cause our eyes to see, cause our ears to hear, cause our nose to smell, cause our tongue to taste, and cause us to feel after you and to find you. Let all of our senses, O oh God, that work in the natural man, O oh God, let them all be submitted to you and let them all be protected, O oh God. Let them all be surrendered and protected. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now I want you to rejoice that you are the temple of the living God. Thank you, Father, that we are your temple. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are your habitation. Thank you, Lord, that you dwell within us. Thank you, Father. Woo, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost right now. Clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise. Clap your hands to him. There's an energy and a life that's coming to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We need to do that again. Clap your hands wherever you are. Right now, if you're driving down the road, you know, I don't know, smack on the steering wheel. <clears throat> but I want you to worship the Lord. I want you to say something out loud. I want you to say hallelujah. I want you to say thank you, Jesus. If you're watching this at a later time, uh, you're walking outside, it's okay. You can still say hallelujah. You can still say thank you, Jesus. I've had some tell me that they, they, they watch and walk and pray with us. Wherever you are right now, let the Holy Ghost just flow with you. You might be in the marketplace right now. You might be in the workplace. You might be at a lunch spot or something right now. And maybe you can't be loud, but you're just kind of observing and you're joining with us. But I want you to express something. Open up your mouth to the Lord right now. There's something that happens when you open up your mouth and you praise God. Praise releases faith. Praise releases faith. All right. Thank you, Jesus. The gifts of the Spirit are operating today. There will be um, a lot of operation, I think, uh, in and out of the teaching today. And I wanted you, you to just anticipate and expect uh, the flow to be here. The first thing that I'm telling you is that there's some joining us today that are already stepping in the anointing. You're already feeling the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You've already been refreshed. And you are here today uh, anticipating a word from the Lord. You are here today anticipating more direction. You are here today with the anointing of the Lord already working in your life. And uh, you are hearing God. You are flowing in the spirit right now. And you just need some confirmations. You just need some confirmations. Uh, when we were just starting our prayers and I was praying in the about the spirit connecting with God, I immediately felt people joining in and I could see I could see light around intercessors and prayer warriors, and I could tell that I have some mature, uh, some mature, gifted people that are on the broadcast with us today. We are so happy to have you with us. Thank you for joining and being a part of this today. It does not take a lot of us to move a lot. It just takes us understanding the Spirit, understanding the will of God, understanding how the kingdom resources work, and using them effectively. It doesn't take a lot of us. Now, there are some things that are very heavy on my spirit today, and I feel it's important for us to pray them. So we're going to do these in segments. We're going to do some segments today. I want us to pray. We're focusing on the local church uh, and how it plays out in our, in our everyday life, how God's kingdom principles and how the global uh, uh, identity of the church comes down and affects us, okay? And it pulls us up into that consciousness. So let me just show you again. And we, we, we go back to some of the same principles. And I heard this a lot when I was prepping this morning. I heard this a lot in the spirit. I heard this, I heard this statement, you do the same things a lot. And I thought, okay, yes, that's true. I do. But then I also think I do them a lot because they are needed a lot. And so you think about this, okay, doctors repeat the same things every day, uh, uh, surgeons repeat the same things every day, pilots do the same things every day, police officers do the same things every day, intercessors, we are here to avail the will of God every day. Now, as we do it, there is some nuance. Every time it is fresh, every time it is new, but there are some teachings that you come back to over and over and over again because the flesh is has to be reminded. 
and because we have to keep wrangling ourselves back into this flow. But as soon as we are there, then we can touch things and we can touch off. <clears throat> and so I know that I have a foundation with many of you of over a year of doing these broadcasts. And so I know that at any moment, God can take us off and we can in, go into prophecy. We can go into healing. We can go into deliverance. We can go into intense spiritual warfare. God could take me in a moment and we could be somewhere on the other side of the world in prayer, praying for something. But here's what I'm focusing on today. Here's what I feel and sense today as our first deposit of grace to help us today. And that is this important principle of being awake. There is a conference that my wife has been birthing over this last several weeks. We have been working deeply in this, but it was it's only within the last couple of months that God spoke this to my wife. She had just felt a, a, a redirect uh, for some of her ministry and some of her focus, and God gave her a very clear uh, a word from the Lord of things that she was supposed to change. We began to put those new things in motion, would bear witness with all of us, with me as pastor, husband, whatever, and as well as our team and our staff, we all felt a witness to these things, and immediately the shift was felt with our team, and immediately was felt with her. It was the next day, or maybe just a couple days later, that God awakened her early in the morning, and with just that word, awakened. And so this conference was born. Uh, so we know that this was a shift to bring us to something. And he said, I want you to start a movement. I want you to start a ladies movement. So there's going to be a, a service to start tonight. And then we'll have services tomorrow uh, for this, for ladies conference with Claudette Walker. Awesome vessel, woman of God. One of the most yielded, surrendered voices you will ever hear in your life, ladies, is going to be here tonight. And so I don't want you to miss this, but this is a larger theme. My point of saying this is that we are carrying out something that is on the global scale that God is wanting to do. I have been speaking about this. God has been talking to me about this. So we have a, a version of this happening in the world, and then we have uh, the Antichrist system that's being built around it, and then we have God's work. So everything that is Antichrist is pseudo-Christ, or is pushing off of something that God is already doing. We may not see it if we're not in the right place, but everything happening in the mountain is what determines what goes on in the valley. So when Jesus appears with Moses and Elijah, and he's transfigured, then there is a demonic spirit that the disciples are not able to cast out because it's on a higher level. It is this kind. And so we are dealing with things that are this kind that we have never bumped up against before. And it's because God is doing things in the spirit that he's never done before. But if we're not in the right place, if we are not awake, we do not know what God is doing. Instead, all we see is the counter action or we see the counterfeit that is in that valley. And so what we are dealing with since 2020 was this powerful, uh, uh, powerful virus that was released upon the earth. We see an antichrist system that's, that was using it to globalize us, to uh, unite all the economies by destroying the economies. Uh, they're presently right now, a year later, trying to kill currencies and they're getting ready for more digital. digital. They're moving all the banking systems over from the old uh, system to the new court system, the QFS uh, system. Um, and so there's major movements, major grid uh, building that's going on. We're bringing all the nations in together and all the powerful nations, the G7, which used to be called the G8, uh, all that's coming together. Uh, okay, and, and, we're, and we're hearing this global reset, global reset, global reset, and then Green New Deal and solar and all this stuff. And they're pushing all of these, all of these things all at once. And it all sounds good. Stimulus checks and, and man, it's going to help everybody. And, and, you know, all of this stuff going, but it's coming at you so fast. And then there's all these other uh, 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 subterfuges that's going out here and it's creating confusion. So what actually happens is instead people say, I've been praying about this. I've been trying to stop it. I've been trying to, and then we just sort of go, well, you know, the elections are over and we can't do anything about it. And so let's just kind of go back into our hole and let's just try to live our life. And we just unplug and then we start going to sleep, which is exactly what 
what the world wants. It's exactly what the devil wants. It's exactly what the globalists want. Is for anybody that is able to, uh, anybody that is able to uh, maybe stand up or do anything, just kind of feels demoralized and defeated. And so we just kind of go back into our shells. And so what God is saying, no, no, no. The answer to the global reset is an awakening. And what do we have in the world? The world is this whole woke movement of everyone's woke. I got woke. I got woke. I got woke. I'm woke. I'm woke. Are you woke? I'm woke. And whatever woke means depends upon uh, whoever uh, whoever's wokeness is the loudest on that particular day. Uh, but what, what do we are? We, we are not in this... Um, volatile, very, uh, very sensitive, ultra, uh, easily offended uh, world that, that's living just on the edge of an explosion at any time. We are the church of the living God. We are rooted and grounded in his love. And we are awakened to what his will is for these last days. This is where we have to operate and function. And it has to be on the local level. We're praying it worldwide, but how we facilitate it most is by having breakthroughs right where we are, is by being awakened right where we are. And so as a local church, we are concentrating now our efforts to say, okay, we have a global vision. We are not, we are not, we do not have our heads in the sand about what's going on. We know these are the last days. We may have seven years. We may have eight years left. We may have a decade left before Jesus comes. We are coming to the end of the, of the second day. We're about to enter into the third millennial day of the church. One year with the Lord is a thousand days. Okay, a thousand years. A thousand years is one day. We know that we're coming to the end of this, uh, of this, of this uh, dispensation of the church. And God saved his best for last. We're praying the blessing of Asher. We're believing God for his promises. And we're praying for it to be global all over the world. But there's ultimately a point when that has to come down here and it has to connect with us on a local level and I have to live awakened. I have to live on top. I have to live focused. I have to be a kingdom man and I have to do that every single day. This is the will of God for us. So as something that we have repeated before, I wanna go back and I want us to pray this again in the spirit today and that's Ephesians chapter number three. Ephesians chapter number three. And I know that this is something that we come back to again and again, but there is so much power here and, it's an, and it is an alignment. It is a plumb line for us. If we are not here, then you keep praying until you get here. If this is not the reality of your life, if this is not the reality of our local church, if this is not the reality of our family, we pray it until it is. We pray it until it happens. All right? So here it is. He says, unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Do we have the consciousness? Are we awakened to the unsearchable riches of Christ? Do you know that? Number two, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ to make all, all men see the fellowship of the mystery. Okay, so we can all, we can make all men see. We can make all men see. So this is showing us, he is preaching to a local church and he is saying, I am sent as one apostle working with you as a local church. And I'm saying, we are here to make all men see. So there was, there was a belief that all men could see. There was a belief, there was an understanding that it's possible that all men can see the fellowship of the mystery. So the mystery was hidden. It was hidden from principalities and powers in the heavenly places. It was hidden from the angels. It was not understood from the foundation of the world, except it was hidden in God. And it was hidden in Christ. And he did everything through the word. He did everything through the word, which is now made known to us as Jesus Christ. And so it was hidden in Christ. It was hidden in him from the foundation of the world. But it was not known uh, by the angels. It was not known by the principalities and powers. 
But now we can make all men see. We can make all men see. And they can be a part of the fellowship of this mystery. This thing that was, a, that was hidden can now be something that we have a fellowship with. It is, it is uniquely ours to the intent that now, now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. God wants us to operate with such clarity of his will that it's no longer a mystery. It is a mystery that's now, it's revealed to us. It is a mystery now that we have a fellowship in. It is something that we've entered into, in other words. The word mystery was, was something that would be talking about uh, being initiated, that we're initiated into something, and that is through the new birth. Uh, through the new birth, what did Jesus say? Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But when we are born again, that which was not visible can now become visible. That which we could not see, we can now see. That which we could not see, I'm saying it again, you can see, you see the kingdom now. All of a sudden, there's an enlightenment. There's a revelation. There's a light that comes to your eyes. And now, those of us that see it in the spirit, what happens? We become friends. We become compadres. We are united. We share immediately. Sister Walker come in last night, and it was like two words of greeting. And within 30 seconds of a minute, we were already in the spirit. We were already sharing what God was saying. We were already feeling because our spirits are so joined and we're so kindred spirit. We were immediately flowing. And before she left the house, she said, I had a little vision that you just put your hand on my head and prayed for me. And it ended up being a 45 minute prayer meeting where we were praying for each other. And it was a glorious thing. This is what we're talking about. The fellowship of the mystery the fellowship that we share in the spirit. It was hidden, but now it's revealed. It's known to us and it flows through the church, the manifold wisdom of God. If we are not operating on this as a local church, we have to pray until we are. Because this was a message that was preached to a local church. <clears throat> According to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. This is how we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to be uncertain. We're not supposed to come going, oh God, I don't know if you're there or not. I'm not sure if you love me, uh, but I'm not, I don't know about what you want to do with my life or where I'm headed, God, but Lord, I'm just, if you're out there, God, I'm just trying to find you. So, oh God, that, that's not how God wants us to pray. There are some times when we are broken and we are completely uh, beaten and we have been through a horrible storm and we're disoriented and sometimes we pray with tears and we just tell God honestly where we are. But, but in, in the, ultimate, uh, the ultimate centering of ourselves in the will of God is that we're supposed to have boldness and access. I know who I am. I know I've got security clearance. You know, I've known people that have security clearance and they show me their badges. And when they show me their security clearance back, I mean, there's something about seeing that. Like, this can open up doors other people can't walk through. Why? I have clearance. This is what he is saying. Folks, other people may not be able to go, but you can go. You have access. I want you to say it. Say, I have access. I come with confidence. God does not want this to remain a mystery. The will of God should not remain a mystery to you. You should not be wandering around going, well, at some point I'm going to figure out his will. There ought to be so much understanding of the purpose that he purposed in Christ. There, there ought to be so much confidence that you have because of his blood and because you're born again. There ought to be enough understanding of, of, of just the general principles of the gospel and the kingdom that, that you understand that it's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about his will. It's all about his kingdom. It's all about the unsearchable riches that are available. It's about the manifold wisdom of God. These are all things that we go up into. These are all things that we do not generate. These are things we access. Okay? I do not generate them. They're already generated. They're already created. I access them with confidence. With confidence. By the faith of him. In other words, he imparts the faith for us to do that. 
says, wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, um, whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you. He says, so I'm praying, this is my bold prayer for you. He said, I'm praying that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. So I'm praying this with, the, with you again today. I'm coming back as a memorial prayer. I'm going to keep praying this until you have this boldness, until you have this access, until you understand and have this awareness. This is our number one today. I'm praying this with you. Are you ready? I want you to lift your hands right now, and I want you to be strengthened. We need strength right now in the Holy Ghost. We have been battling. We have been bombarded. The enemy has tried to attack us. He's tried to hit us with every kind of weakness that he can throw at us in our flesh or in our bodies, in our minds. Our emotions wear us out. I did a whole session on this, being delayed, distracted, disillusioned. Okay, all of this outward uh, attacks that are against us. No, today we are going to be strengthened in Jesus' name. I'm speaking it by the authority of the word of God right now. I'm speaking it in the name of Jesus, according to your word, Father. We are praying, oh God, and I'm asking you, according to the riches of your glory, that you would grant us, that you would grant us, that you would lean forth that scepter and extend that scepter to us and say yes, that we would be strengthened with might. Strengthen us with your might by your Holy Spirit in the inner man. I release it right now. I release might. I release the power. I release I release the dunamis. I release the energy. I release the force. I release the power of the Holy Spirit. I release strength to come into our spirit man right now. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Say, I've got it. Say, I've got strength right now. Say, I'm getting stronger every day in Jesus' name. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Christ is dwelling in your hearts. Christ is dwelling in your hearts, your heart, the center of you. But Christ is dwelling in your heart, in the center, by faith. In other words, you, you, keep, you keep this consciousness of God. You have an awareness of Christ in you. So it's God in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, but now it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. So it's God in Christ and Christ in us. So we are in Christ and Christ is in us. Hallelujah. That you being rooted and grounded in love. And here's the thing that we pray consistently. But how, how, much, how important it is. That you being rooted and grounded in love. This is what stabilizes us. Christ in our hearts by faith. And rooted and grounded in love. When this is my source. My roots are love. My roots are his love. His love for me. And my love for him. Those are my roots. They go deep down. Nothing, nothing gets me out of that. I am persuaded. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Okay, that he said that you being rooted and grounded. I want you to say that. Say I'm rooted and say I'm grounded in love. May be able to comprehend with all saints. Comprehend with all saints. I want you to say that with all saints. What is the breadth and length and depth and height? So we keep praying it until it's a reality. We keep praying it. So we've done a whole session on fullness. Yep, come back and keep praying it until the fullness is operating in your life. So he is saying, look, I want you to comprehend with all saints. This is, again, the global church. All saints, not all saints in, Ephes in, in Ephesus, but all saints all around the world. I want you to have the same comprehension that is in all the saints I want you to I don't want there to be any revelation knowledge in the global church that is not operating in the local church. That's what Paul is saying here. 
This is his boldness and access prayer. This is his unsearchable riches prayer. This is his uh, strengthened with might in your spirit, in your inner man prayer. This is what he is saying. I want you to comprehend. I want you to have this. All right, comprehend again. What is this word? To lay hold of is what it means in the Greek. To seize upon, take possession of. So he said, I want you to get a hold of this. Understand, perceive, learn, comprehend. Get a hold of this global uh, comprehension of what God is doing in the church. Let that flow into the local church. I want it. It's got to happen until we are, we are in a daily consciousness and functioning. And what, that ha what happens is there becomes so much clarity and so many people praying in that unity and praying in that agreement and praying in that symphonia. All the instruments playing their part at the same time, watching the conductor and reading off the same page, which is the will of God. Then we are moving mountains. Then we are turning generations. Then we are stopping the mouths of lions and quenching the violence of fire. It is there that we subdue kingdoms and wrought righteousness. It's there that we get into that same realm of, 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 of Hebrews 11 and, the, and the, the great champions of faith through the generations. And we know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that we might be filled with all the fullness of God, comprehending with all saints. I'm gonna pray this with you right now. I'm gonna speak this with you right now. We must have a deluge of the Holy Ghost. We must have an awareness in the spirit. Something has got to happen to us that we can function and operate on a local level, in a local church setting, we can operate with a global mindset that we are aware of what God is doing. We are connected with what God is speaking and we are functioning and operating there unhindered in the spirit. Yanda Lorda Candide O So de O Sute Kikikam Buhuti Kalamahakata Yesusu Watakahamu Pahatini Ikulu Kugumwanya Da Sancha to Como Dili Silicum Buchisikubu Wa Wasisi I Tonkolo Onko Ma Ame Papa O I Willisipi Tinchisikunu Landau Dan Chedekita Umpa A A Okundeke Sim Bichitikawa I told you when we started, the gifts were going to operate. My Lord, uh, the Holy Spirit is, is, is working right now. I want you to just continue to pray with me. I don't know uh, who this is connecting to exactly. I don't know who this is connecting to exactly, but I see something for Native Indian, Native Americans. I see something I think this may connect up to Stillwater. It may connect up there in Oklahoma. There may be something uh, in Arizona. There may be something in New Mexico that this is connecting to. But I think there's also some roots here in this region where we are at as well for the Native Americans. There may be some uh, farther south that's connecting in Mexico or, or in Central America that are connecting with this. But I'm seeing something here. I'm hearing some ancient language that we're connecting to. And that means we're connecting into uh, something in the spirit world that we are addressing. So we're going to pray this in the name of Jesus that we can have a visitation of the Holy Ghost. I heard in the spirit, I heard in the spirit that God was creating. He said, I am making a highway, a super highway in the spirit where there is, uh, where, where there is a, a freedom uh, of, of traveling in the spirit. In other words, there is, it was unhindered. God has created something unhindered. So it, I think to put this together, as we begin then to focus more in the spirit of what I'm seeing now, and I know this is so, it seems so random from where we just were, but this is how the spirit goes. He's applying it immediately. He's applying immediately. If there's someone right now that is Native American, if you have Native American blood, I want you to lift your hands and let the Holy Ghost flow through you right now because you are a key to unlock a gateway, a door in the spirit right now. And that's gonna lead us to our second session in just a second. I have a second se segment that we're gonna do. In just a second. But I want us to pray this right now.
zacini wuchi de wata langkang da won chan ding kam mandang dang de yo so now we're going into asia my god jando in ligan de gonde in de munde da tunje am bode dum el likomba lama le ponto rutun chidi don de la comba o bas santo bije do yende do de do dat sin da don da la dalo de cuz they share some of the same ancestry the native americans uh share some of the same andrus ancestry of asia ubali tanikoni a city chino kalwal tananasa alaska eo mo sopana nika ta city putulo koni ta kandu a jananai kandu sai sat at yelu kurie satu ya kondea from the plains of of america oh god to the coastlines in the south oh god all the way to the west to the deserts oh god up Lord Jesus up oh god into Canada and uh into Alaska across uh into Asia e teamu menda da su italu menda sini you are reaching you are reaching these uh these ancient peoples with their ancient languages you are reaching them oh god there are there are connections to to old very very old uh uh covenants and blood sacrifices uh and demonic strongholds and witchcraft there are old these are old very very old demonic uh, strongholds that you are that you are breaking down that you are opening up oh god the way for the gospel to come in inuit to the inuit people ilo laton lekedane atasano awanya yen satana koya satana utandu edc ishokoya na god but in our local churches right now in our local congregation what is ever in this region what is here what is still underneath all the concrete what is still resting around our monuments what is uh in our history oh lord jesus mm yole manda kiana mondo selamita da urida do sodalema ila loco dele okay okay yes lord thank you jesus all right clap your hands to the lord and give him praise right now just give him praise right now <clears throat> okay. I feel like that I need to I need to segue by talking about tongues for a little bit. I want us to go to a stay in the word so that everyone can feel comfortable with it, okay? So let's go to uh 1 Corinthians 1 Corinthians 13 and 14. I want to show you 13 and 14 again and I'm going to show you something about speaking in tongues and then we go back to uh, to another uh text. Um we can look in Jude and we could also look in uh in Romans 8 but let's look here first for though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels tongues of men everyone say tongues of men and tongues of angels there's tongues of angels so that shows us that there is more than one kind of language he says so I can speak with tongues and God can enable me to speak a known language that men speak and by the holy spirit I can speak in tongues and i can speak languages that angels speak okay he says now if i do that and i don't have love it doesn't mean anything verse number 2 if i have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and have all faith so you can see gift of prophecy is good understanding mysteries is good having knowledge is good uh, having all faith is good removing mountains is good so so this is not he is not saying there's something wrong with doing this he is saying I just need to do it with love. But he's giving more insight into spiritual gifts because he just talked about spiritual gifts in chapter 12. And he's bringing in now an understanding of what motivates what comes behind that rooted and grounded in love. Yes, that is the center again of all spiritual ministry flows out of God's perfect love. But I want you to see this again, men and angels. Now chapter 14. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. So he is saying when he's in private prayer, in other words, when this is not uh, a spiritual gift operating as a message for the body, he said as a, as a just basic principle of personal prayer, when he speaks in unknown tongues, he doesn't speak to men, he speaks to God. For no man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit he speaks mysteries. So in the spirit, the Holy Spirit is unveiling, is revealing 
mysteries. Mysteries are being solved while he's praying in the spirit. He speaketh mysteries. He that prophesieth speaketh unto men, to edification, to exhortation, and to comfort. He that speaketh in a known tongue, notice this, edifies himself. He builds himself up. And he says, verse number five, I would that you all speak with tongues, but rather that you prophesied. We go down a little further, and he tells us that he speaks in tongues. He said, I speak in tongues more than you all. We know that. I thank God I speak with tongues more than you all. Verse number 18. So they all spoke with tongues, and he spoke in tongues more than all of them. So he is saying there is a lot of speaking in tongues that's going on, and this is good. So I want to say this first and foremost to you. It is good for you to speak in tongues. You speak mysteries, things are being unveiled and revealed, and you edify yourself when you speak with tongues. Now he is talking about if there's too many people speaking in tongues in church, then nobody is getting encouraged and edified because nobody knows what they're all saying unless there is an interpretation. This is why he's saying, I want you to prophesy because prophecy gives us clear words of understanding that God can speak to us and can encourage the body. So prophesying is building up, it's exhorting for action, or it's comforting you in a loss. So he that speaks in no tongue edifies himself. He that prophesies edifies the church. I would that you all speak with tongues, but rather that you prophesy, for greater is he that prophesies than he that speak within tongues, except he interpret. So if you're speaking in tongues and you can interpret, he said, that's great. It's the same as someone who prophesies. Why? The church could be edifying. Now, brother, when I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall it profit you? Except I speak by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by doctrine. So he is saying the profit comes by, or, or the value comes by there being revelation knowledge, or by knowledge of the scriptures, or by prophesying, or by doctrinal principles. So in even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction of the sounds, how shall it be known? What is piped or harp? So what he is doing here, he's just simply adding more clarity to this whole uh, process. Now, likewise, except you utter by the tongue words easily understood, how shall we know what is spoken? For you shall speak into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world. None of them is without signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be to him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Even so ye, so for so much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. So the goal is not just for you to be involved in gifts, he said, or spiritual experiences, but rather the goal is to building up the church. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue, here it is now, pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. Now he's teaching when you are speaking in own tongues, just like I was praying in tongues. Okay, my spirit is praying. And what's happening is my spirit is connecting to God's mind. He said, my understanding is unfruitful. So by my natural understanding of speaking, it doesn't flow from the same place. It doesn't flow from the same part of the brain. Okay? It's because my spirit is praying. I am yielding to God and my spirit is using my words and he's using my lips and he's using my voice, and he's using my language. He's saying, so when you're praying in a known tongue, pray that you can interpret. Now, this is something that God can do for you, is that if you can interpret for the body, you can interpret for yourself. So he's saying, look, pray that you can interpret. Pray that you can understand. Verse 15, if you don't believe me, what is it then? Paul says, I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. He says the spirit can connect your brain. The spirit can connect your mind. The spirit can help you understand what you're praying. I'm speaking in tongues, but now all of a sudden I'm understanding. So oftentimes what happens with me, I prayed this a long time ago. God answered this prayer a long time ago. But many times people don't speak in tongues very much because they're not, they don't understand what the speaking in tongues is doing. Someone told them it was just for the evidence of the Holy Ghost. No, 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 no. It's not just evidence for you to speak one time. That's enough to get to heaven. But 
but you don't get the Holy Ghost just to speak one time. You get the Holy Spirit so you know that the Spirit can speak whenever He wants. However much you yield, whenever you get into prayer, whenever you surrender yourself to God, it can be almost instantaneous because you are now connected. The spirit man is in charge and it's connected. You are submitted to God. Your brain, your, your mind, it is now submitted to the spirit. And at any moment, God can do it. Now, what happens is the Holy Spirit working in you can actually discern you. You can discern, the same gift that works to discern someone else can help discern you. I remember Billy Cole going to the doctor and he said, I have a tumor in my body. And he, and he says, he said, he said, I want you to find out exactly where it is. I want you to put your scope on it. Well, he had been in prayer and God told him he had a tumor. He went in, they put the, you know, they did the, he said, somewhere it's in my abdomen somewhere. And sure enough, they, you know, they did a, a scan and they found the tumor. And he said, the Holy Spirit told me it was there. You know, <laughs> it was Billy Cole. What was it? God discerned his own body. He discerned what was going on. And so this is what we are, <clears throat> this is what we are doing uh, as we're letting the Holy Spirit uh, teach us. So our understanding in the beginning, he said, my understanding is unfruitful. Does it? I'm just a nani, nani, nani. What am I doing? I'm just speaking in tongues. Oh, okay. And then what does it mean? I don't know. But he says, but I'm praying with the Spirit and I'm praying with the understanding. He says, I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding. I got into this dimension of singing in the spirit one time, uh, many, many years ago. And a young man got in the spirit with me. He, he yielded him, he submitted his spirit to me. I was, I was there as an evangelist. And he was a young man. He was wanting to grow and learn from me. And he would, it just totally came and, 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 and uh, got into agreement and submitted uh, in the spirit. And he just came right along next to me and started singing the same song in tongues that I was singing. The youth group started coming in and I just was like, okay, we're totally in the spirit. I'm gonna change keys. I changed keys, he changed keys with me. It was like we went up and down. We, it was like all of a sudden we were breathless because we sang the exact same words in tongues for about five minutes. The same song, the same words, the same cadence, change keys, all in perfect agreement, perfect alignment. And the whole youth group heard it and saw it. It was there to give, it was, it, was, it was another sign. God gave us another sign of how real the Holy Spirit was. I've been in times in the Spirit where we could understand each other. Not only did I understand what I was speaking with a general gist, a general understanding, not translation word for word, but, a, but an interpretation, which means general gist. I was understanding the themes, what God was saying. And then all of a sudden, I start hearing what others are saying, and I'm understanding. And they're not speaking English. They're still speaking in tongues. Okay, so God is trying to tell us that there is more here for us that you can explore. So when you are in prayer, sometimes God will turn you, and it's tongues of men. And sometimes God will turn you, and it's tongues of angels. And sometimes God is turning you, and you're not speaking to the angels that are working with us. You are speaking to the fallen angels that are against us and the Holy Spirit will address them through you. We don't know what we should pray for as we ought. So the Spirit itself makes intercession for us. That's our Romans 8 text. Our Spirit makes intercession for us. And so he is, he is telling them, look, I want you to have understanding when you do it. And he said, now, when you're teaching and when you're speaking, it's best for you to stay in the language everybody understands. But when you're praying, he said, while we're talking about tongues, let me tell you this pray that you can interpret. So I want to pray this with you right now, that God will help you to interpret. And then we're going to do another segment, one more segment about offenses. Okay, let's pray it right now. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am praying that every person under the sound of my voice, every person that watches this broadcast, every person on YouTube or Facebook, everyone that's live or that will watch later, I am praying now that you would release understanding. This is your will it is not just special for certain people. It is the will of God that we can all interpret. We may not all have the gift of interpretation to edify the body, but we can all have that understanding that you give us as mature Christians and as Christ followers in the spirit. You can help us, O oh Lord Jesus, to understand that this is a part of the role that you have given to us as maturing in grace. 
that we come to full age in the spirit that we should be able to understand and we can easily yield to the Holy Spirit. I pray that we would speak in tongues often. I pray that we would speak in tongues every day. I pray that it would just flow out of us, oh God, as we are constantly yielded to you, as we daily walk in the spirit and hear your voice. This we ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise in Jesus' name. I want to go back uh, to a foundational uh, verse here just because I want to clarify one more time. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, when he's starting everything off, he says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the Lord, world, verse 12, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. He says, So we've got the Spirit which is of God, which, which things also we speak, not in the words of men's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. That's the understanding that's, un, that, that's foolish, that's unfruitful, that Paul was talking about. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But this is what he's talking about. My, I'll pray in the Spirit, and I'll pray with understanding. Verse 15, he's building off of this principle. But he that is spiritual judges all things. And he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of God that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. I want you to say it. We have the mind of Christ so I can judge all things. I can discern all things by being spiritually minded. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> two short segments here. One is on offenses. I really felt this this morning. And I talked, I alluded to a little bit more in my opening remarks. But the world is on a just a hair trigger of, of going into another explosion. Uh, we're having critical race theory that's being taught now in schools. Uh, this is lose-lose. This is lose-lose. While it, it, its intent is to try to bring equality, there's not really equality there. It is, it is creating more offenses. It's just... It's just, it, it just making more and more divisiveness, more and more divisive. It, it is, it, it's just, there, it, it, there's no win in this process. There's no win. We want there to be equality as the church. There, there's neither Jews nor Greek, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, uh, male nor female. At the cross, we are truly equal. At the, at the cross, we submit our race. We submit uh, our identity. We submit our history. And we give up the right to be offended. But if, if, you, if we constantly have offenses and we can never get past those offenses, that we're always apologizing, always apologizing, always apologizing, always apologizing, the, the offended person never gets better until they choose to accept the apology until it's enough. And it's never enough because it's not intended to be enough. It's just, there's a spirit behind this. The Bible says many shall be offended in the last days. It, that, that means in, in Matthew 24, many shall be offended. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. It, it says, and many shall be offended. That word many there means more than 50%. That means we are walking into a world right now where the majority of the world is operating from a position of offense or a position of hurt or a position of pain. That means the church is constantly being bombarded because iniquity shall abound because people are evil. People are not basically good. They're basically selfish. And selfishness is the opposite of love. It is the opposite of love. And so what happens is this iniquity, this self-seeking, this manipulating, lying, cheating, deceiving, uh, you know, getting there, stepping on whoever, I'm going to take mine, lust, perversion, uh, you know, conquests. I mean, it's it's constant. It's constant. Uh, and playing whatever angle they have to, you have to play to do this. Uh, they'll do it. Uh, out of the heart of man proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, uh, etc. Out of the heart of man. Th there's something that's flowing out. That's that iniqu iniquity. Iniquity. Self-will. Okay? The love of many shall wax cold. People stop loving because they keep getting trampled upon. Their love keeps getting taken advantage of. Every time they try to do something that sounds like love or looks like love, it just it, it constantly gets misinterpreted or 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 or, or or destroyed or betrayed, and so they just start turning it off and people stop caring. And and when you get past feeling, the Bible says when you get past feeling, God gives you gives us over. 
uh, gives us over to uh, reprobate minds. Past, we can't even have a conscience anymore. There's no right and wrong anymore. It's just, it's just a big, it's just a big callus that's there. And many shall be offended. This is the world. This is the world. This is the growing offenses in the world. This is cancel culture. This is all of this stuff. And right now, Gade Prime Month, they're walking to the streets and they're ramming down their agenda again uh, into our into our schools, our universities, and through our government and uh, you know pop culture and music and anyone that says anything about it is not loving. Anything that stands up and says, "Well, that's not what the Bible teaches," is somehow a bigot and homophobic. And so we say, no, we love everyone. We don't distinguish any sin from any other sin. We love everybody. We have X, everything in the church. And such were some of you. And, and the homosexual was listed there. Such were some of you. Uh, we, we hate the sin. We don't hate the sinner. We love the sinner. But there is, and there's a place, and we're not afraid. We've dealt with all kinds of uh, cases of this. And I've, I've baptized... Uh, very, Mr. Gay USA, I baptized in Jesus' name many years ago. So I'm not afraid of it. But we, at the same time, the Bible is still the Bible. Uh, and we stand up for the word of God and we will pay a price for that. The most uh, people preaching tolerance are the ones that are most intolerant. And this is the, the double standard of the antichrist system in the world today. This is what we are navigating and dealing with. But what the, the, net, result, the net result is, is that it just makes us not want to care and makes us want to be apathetic and it makes us just want to go into our hole. It's that same thing I started off with today. But what is really a pushback, it's, it's, it's a pushback with, with, of tired of being around people that are always offended, that never, never get fixed because you have to choose to forgive. You have to choose to forgive. So I want us to pray today that God will give us exceptional wisdom, this manifold wisdom of God, that God will give us exceptional wisdom to know how to heal people that really want to be healed, to help people that are caught in a trap, that are caught in the snare of the enemy, that they can recover themselves out of that snare of the enemy. I want us to pray that we can reach honest hearted people and that somehow God can give us more harmony in the church. We have so much flavor uh, I love the flavor. I love the ethnicity. I love all of the diversity in the church. I think it's amazing. I celebrate it. I rejoice in it. We have so many people from different cultures that connect with us online and connect with us in the church. I love you. you. I mean, you're my people. I love all of you. And uh, I enjoy it. I, I, I want to learn and grow. And, and if I'm offensive, I'll apologize. I'm not afraid of apologizing. But my point is, in all of this is that somehow God let the cross be bigger than our history, be bigger than our offenses, be bigger than our differences, be bigger than, than all of the, the, the world's uh, divisive hate speech that's out there. And somehow let the church be a true place of harmony and healing and restoration where it's safe. And you can come and see what real equality actually looks like, where we rejoice together and celebrate together and we value each other and respect each other. This is what I want to see so desperately in the church. And I wanted to come back to this again. And I wanted to talk to this again. And I wanted to just release faith into the body of Christ to renew us. Because that fading, that love of many shall wax cold. It, it is a slow waning of our, of our desire to care. And we must not stop caring. We have to keep loving. We have to keep uh, uh, reaching. We have to keep preaching. This gospel of the... This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. Then shall the end come. He that endures to the end shall be saved. Some things we just have to endure in order to preach the gospel. So we have to endure it. Maybe there'll be some, some persecution. Maybe there'll be some people pushing back. Maybe they'll be, we'll be hated of all nations for his name's sake. But we're going to keep preaching Jesus the way he, the way he actually is. We're going to keep preaching his word and we're going to keep pulling people out of the sin and out of the darkness and showing them that there is a better way for everyone that truly wants deliverance and is ready for repentance. Does that make sense? All right, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you for our church triumphant family right now. And for all those that are joining with us from other local churches, God, we have to deal with this on a local level and we all deal with it in a different way. It all hits us in a different way and some are more intense than others. But we are praying in Jesus' name against this homosexual agenda. We are praying, oh God, 
right now against all of this, uh, uh, this baiting, this baiting, race baiting or divisiveness or hate speech and, and uh, all of this uh, tolerance preaching that is actually intolerant. This antichrist system and spirit that's trying to just inflame people, that is trying to constantly cause there to be a, a, a controversy or to constantly trap people so they'll get in lawsuits or that there'll be uh, big problems. We, we do not want to be in these snares. We truly love people. We want to help people. We want to embrace people, whatever they're struggling with, whatever uh, problem that they have. God, we want to be able to embrace them. And we want to have a church, oh God, where people can come from every walk of life and from every ethnicity and from every language. And they can be celebrated and loved and appreciated because we've all experienced the same altar. Because we've all repented of our sins. Because we've all laid down our lives in this world and found a better life in Christ. Because we've been to the water in the name of Jesus and we're all covenant children of God. And because we've been redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. And so we operate and function inside of your will and your purpose in Jesus' name. All right, clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise. Give him praise. My last component here, and I know we're already 10 minutes uh, past one, but here's my last component. And this is a, just a speaking of a very practical level, that when you are trying to understand the will of God in your life, flow in first and foremost the general will of God. Look at the word of God. And if you are doing everything that's in the word of God that you know to do, operate and function according to those principles. Do you have a spiritual authority in your life? Are you accountable? Do you know what the word of God says? Are you living in sin? Are you then submit yourself to God again? Get out of those sinful practices. Walk in righteousness before God. Go back to, now if you're trying to find direction, Go back to the last thing that you knew for sure was God's will. What was the last thing that God told you specifically to do? What was the last prophetic word that you have? Confusion came after that. Okay, go back to what you know. I know this. I know I'm called to do this. I know that we're all supposed to be a witness. I know that we're all supposed to live a life of worship before God. We're all supposed to... Uh, come out from among them, be separate, touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. We're all supposed to be people of prayer. Okay, we're all, we, those are, we're called to be saints, the Bible says, so we all have that calling on us. So what is my specific calling? What's my specific purpose? Okay, what, what are you getting fruit in? Where do you feel the best, uh, co most confidence? Where do you get the best results? Where, where, when you do this or when you operate in this, do you have the most joy? Those are some of the things that can help you in finding where you fit in the body of Christ. Now, when it comes to making moves, big financial moves, moving into a new house, taking a new job, moving cross country, okay? Um, those are things that, uh, those are things that, how do I know? Am I supposed to move? How am I, how do I know? Okay, that's, th those are different kinds of prayers about the will of God. But it's important that you have the other big pieces in place because those big pieces are going to remain in your life when you move. And so if you are moving to a place where those big pieces are not, then that should be a check for you. If you are going, if you're feeling to move to a place where you, you don't know if you have a, a, a good pastor or there's a good church, there ought to be a good reason for that. Are you there to start a church? And if so, who's going to be your covering while you're starting that church? Okay, those are things like that. Those are very important because we never get out from under covering. I have a pastor. I have someone that I am submitted to. I have, I have various boards that I am submitted to, that I'm accountable to. Uh, so we're never out from under that authority. I cannot be an authority unless I'm under authority. So those are things that are very important. What does the present authority in your life say about that move? Okay, those are, those are important things if you're going to make moves. On a practical level, if you've got clearance... Okay, there's good church. There's a good pastor where you're going. Um, there's your pastor knows that you need to leave. He understands. Uh, he's supportive of that. Okay, how do you know? How do you know on the practical level? Everything on the practical will match the spiritual. If something is truly the will of God for you to do, you'll get the job. You'll sell the house. You'll you'll have the right house. Okay, you can pray those things. Then God, if this is your will, talk to my pastor. Okay, that cleared. 
okay, if this is your will, okay, God, and you want me to do this, then I need you to give me the right job when I'm where I'm going. I need you to give me that. Okay, okay, that's the job. Okay, I got the job. Okay, okay, God, if I'm going to move there, then I need to know my kids are going to be in a good school. Okay, well, there's the, there's the school. Okay, well, if I'm going to move, Lord, then I need to know that I'm going to have good housing and I'm going to be in a neighborhood, blah, 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 where you want me to be. Boom, here's the house. Okay, God, if you want me to move, Lord, you know my car is broken down. Okay, here's the car. So he's going to help you with the practical things. He's, he's going to help you. You don't just jump out there. Well, I believe this is God's will. And because it's God's will, then he is obligated to do all this for me. No, you let God open those doors. You let God confirm it by having all those things come in place as a confirmation for his will before you go. So I hope that helped a few people today. And I, I hope that it will, it, will, it will help you to get more clarity about your situation. What I always do is I always pray from the fulcrum of faith, God, what is God's perfect will in my life? I'm submitted to your will, God. And then I go in the garden with Jesus and I say, here's my desire. My desire is if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. Okay, that's his desire. You tell God what you want and what you feel is best and what you think would serve his kingdom most. Okay, this is the desire. And you tell him everything. And then you finish by submitting all of those things that you just told to God and you do it just exactly the opposite. Now I relinquish, not my will, but your will be done. And what I have found is that God will answer those prayers in either direction. If it's your will, God, I need this, 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 and this. This is what I'm desiring. If it's not your will, then close the door, shut it down. And if I'm supposed to stay where I'm at, okay, God, if I'm, if I'm not supposed to go, if I'm supposed to stay here, then I need you to close these doors and I need you to open new ones where I'm at so that I can be fulfilled where I'm at, so that I can be effective. I need you to help me to understand what you're gonna do with the no, if you're telling me no. So you can pray all through the no. So you pray through all the yes, and you pray through all the no, and it will become very clear the farther that you pray in either of those directions, it will be very clear what his specific will is for your life. If that's not enough, take some time in prayer and fasting and wait for peace. Because peace is the barometer of Jesus. God is not the author of confusion. All right, God bless you. Thank you for joining us in our broadcast today. Remember, don't live in the shadows, but live in the perfect light. Because with him, it's always high noon. There is no shadow of turning. There is no change in him. He is perfect in all of his ways. And he loves you with perfect love. And he's given you every good and every perfect gift. So get in that light where Jesus is right now. Don't stand in those shadows. And if you can, ladies in this area, join us tonight. It's going to be awesome. Going to be a demonstration of the Spirit of God with power. We love you. God bless you.